Can a less than $200 tube amp be any good? I don't know. Let's find out. Grab a cup of coffee, sit down. Let's talk about the Tube Cube 7. Today's sponsor is Sith Audio. When you demand the best service in the industry, there's only one name, and that's Sith Audio. They've been doing this for a long time, and there's no chance that they're going to force choke you if they don't like what you're saying. Sith Audio for all your speaker and amplifier needs. If you're new here, consider subscribing. We obviously don't take ourselves very seriously here, but we are serious about high value audio products. Consider turning the bell notification on so you know when all my silly videos go up and uh, like the video if you like it. Okay, the Tube Cube 7. The Tube Cube 7 is a product sold exclusively through the Tube Depot. It has a single 12AX7B driving two EL84 tubes. It has a reported steady state output of 3.5 watts and has four, six, and eight ohm speaker outputs and a single RCA input. This amp is only $180 and has been $180 for the last six years. I actually, I did my little review and then I looked up some other reviews and there's not very many out there but one is from 2015 and the price is the same. So good job Tube Depot for keeping the price the same. We appreciate it. Tube Depot did not send this to me. I bought this after one of my patrons, B, you know who you are, recommended it. So I bought it and actually some of the other patrons bought it and we've kind of been discussing it ever since. Why would anybody buy a tube amp to begin with? They're oftentimes expensive, they're low power, they're, they're very inefficient. They put off a ton of heat. Actually, I, one of the reasons why I don't even have a tube amp anymore in this room is because it heated up the room like a space heater. Anyway, they have distortion, right? And most people in the audio world don't like distortion. But this distortion is, well, it's, it's good distortion. It is second. Most of the distortion is what's called second order harmonic distortion which means when there's distortion, it's the same note, except an octave higher. And a lot of people think that sounds nice and smooth and fun and awesome. And I would have, a, I would have to agree with that. Second order harmonics are also called even or are even harmonics. So there's even and there's odd harmonics. Even harmonics are considered to be the good kind. So the distortion is where the magic is at. Guitar amps, and microphones routinely use tubes in their circuit design to make them sound better, sound awesome. So the distortion is good. It's good. So as you can see, the Tube Cube 7 is quite small. Here's a coffee mug. For comparison, it's pretty simple too. On the front, you have a volume knob. Uh, you have an IEC power connector on the back. It doesn't come with a cord though, so you have to get your own cord has a switch, it has a single set of RCA ins, and then it has three different speaker outs depending upon what the nominal impedance of your speaker is. All right, so one thing we need to talk about is the quality control going on over at the Tube Depot or whoever made the Tube Cube 7. It is made overseas in China, by the way. The RCAs are flipped on mine and from what I understand on many others as well. So if you get this and if you play it, make sure you play a track that you're familiar with what's supposed to come out of each speaker. I personally use ACDC's Shoot to Thrill because at the beginning of that song, there's an electric guitar that comes out of the right speaker. And if I have the polarity mixed up or it's messed up on the equipment itself, it'll come out of the left speaker. So mine are flipped around is that a big deal not really to me i when when there's a tube amp a true tube amp and it's less than 200 dollars, i try to keep my expectations reasonable so how does it sound before i actually put my ears on any tube amps i had the preconceived idea that tube amps were supposed to sound warm and lush or that they all sounded warm and lush not really detailed and my personal experience with tube amps has been anything but that. I have heard two different EL34 powered, or that was the power tubes, 
amps that were the Bay uh, Bayou Range or Rysong A10 and the Bayou Range MT34 Mark II. So both of those used the EL34 tube. To my ear, those amps sounded like their focus was even in the treble region and very sparkly and nice and sweet and, and pretty. The EL84 on this one into my ear moved that focus a little bit lower, maybe to the upper mids, mid to upper mid to mids of the mid range. How's that for weird? Mids of the mid range to the upper mid range. That's where I felt the focus was with the EL84 tube. Now, does that apply to every EL84 amp out there? I don't know because I haven't listened to it. But on this one, I felt the focus came down a bit. It was very nice with female vocals and male vocals. I will say though, that if your speaker is a bit mid forward or has any type of bumps in the frequency response, around the 1500 up to the two, 3000 Hertz range, it may be a bit much for you. So with the Tube Cube 7, I felt like it took a little bit of the edge off. I listened to the Sony SSCS 5s. I think they have a sensitivity of around 87 dB. Well, we're gonna talk about that in a little bit when we start talking about power. But they are a very, they have a super tweeter, so they can be very airy up there. I felt like some of that air was taken away, but I didn't feel like I was losing anything because one of the cool things about tube amps is how they present the music. In my experience, one of the funnest parts of a tube amp is the experience. And yes, it does color the sound or change it depending upon what type of tube you have. I also hear a, not hear, I experience a more holographic soundstage, which means things are placed in space more definitively, definitively, I don't even know how to talk, definitively, than maybe like an AB or a Class D amp. So the experience, the immersion factor is, in my experience, better with a tube amp than an AB or a Class D. Doesn't mean they don't do that, I just feel like the tube amps do it more. With that said, the Tube Cube 7, does provide a holographic experience, but not as big of one as the Rysong A10 or the MT34 Mark II. But it's okay, because this is $200. Actually, it's $180. So what you need to know, this is reported to put out three and a half watts. Does it? I don't know. What I do know is that on some speakers, when I got to the 12 o'clock position, anything beyond that with the volume knob started to distort. So to get the most out of this product, of course, you're going to have to have higher sensitivity speakers. And the sensitivity of a speaker, it just means how loud it plays at a given power. So the higher the sensitivity, the louder that speaker is going to play at the same power as a lower sensitivity speaker. So 90 or above is probably where you wanna be at with a speaker's sensitivity if you're pairing it up with the Tube Cube 7. I did get it to work very well with the Sony SSCS5s and some of the other speakers, all of which, so the Wharfdale uh, 12, Diamond 12.2s and the Q Acoustics 3020i both had sensitivities of around the 88 area. And it, it did fine with those, Not doesn't get super loud, but it does fine. The best pairing from a pure power perspective. I don't think it was the best pairing from a sound perspective, from a spec perspective and a sensitivity, it was the Klipsch RP500M. However, the Klipsch, in, to my ear, can be a bit forward with its presentation of the upper mid-range, mid to upper mid-range. With the EL84 having a bit of focus on the same area, the voices really came forward on the RP500M. And if that is your thing, then you're going to be in heaven. Those two products will mate up and pair very well together. But just bear in mind that if you don't like that forward presentation, that's probably not gonna be the pairing for you. Even speakers with lower sensitivities around 87 still got to a listening level that I personally was fine with, which is around 65 to 75 dB SPL, where I was sitting. SPL is sound pressure level basically how loud it is. You can download a free app called, I don't even know. Anyway, 
SPL meter. You can just search an app. There's free ones out there, and you can use the microphone in your phone, microphone in your phone, to tell how loud something is wherever you're sitting. You just hit it, click, and it'll tell you. This is a no frills amp, and it really has to be at $180. If you want to stretch this amp's legs even further, Think about pairing it up with something that has bass management. The Emotiva PT-1 is their new preamp and there are RCA outputs that have a fixed 90 Hertz filter, which means you're not sending all of those lower bass frequencies to the tube cube or whatever amp you're sending them to, which frees things up because those bass frequencies are the things that suck up the power and require more from the amp. So if you can cut that off around 90 hertz or 80 hertz or 100 hertz, you free up the amp to actually do what it needs to do with mid-range and treble, and you can get it louder. And quite frankly, it's going to sound cleaner as well. The Emotiva SE8 and SE12 also have bass management built in. So if you use their RCA in and out, you, there's actually a variable high pass filter that will go onto the amp and therefore your speakers. I think it's 60, 80, and 100 hertz. It, you can, there's a little switch there. So if you utilize a Emotiva sub, and I think some other people's subs as well, you can do bass management. Again, going to stretch the legs of your amp even further, be able to get more clean power to the speakers because there's not a lot of extra power going around on these things. You can also look at doing a mini DSP active crossover. So that's a little bit more complicated, but it can be done. So who is this product for? Number one is for people that know they already love EL84 and the sound that those amps make. And they maybe want to put it in a different room or a den or, or whatever. Two, this is for people that want to dip their toe into the tubiness arena. For less than $200, you can get a true tube amp, no hybrid stuff going on here. A very small package, a very affordable package, and if you've never played around with tube amps before, this is probably the best deal in town. If you have reasonable expectations with this product, I don't think you're going to be disappointed, even though the, the RCAs may be flipped around for you. Again, it's $180 for a true tube amp. So uh, this is, of course, a recommendation. If you know what you're getting yourself into because you may not like tubes. Your speakers may not be sensitive enough. Your speakers maybe have a frequency response that this doesn't complement. Bear in mind that that could be a possibility. But if you have a speaker that is maybe U-shaped, maybe the mid-range is actually scooped out a bit, that could be a very good pairing with this thing if it has a high enough sensitivity or if you listen at levels that aren't deafening at all times. Easy recommendation. This is a no frills product though. If you want something that's much better, it's going to cost more, I would look at Deckware. It's a US company. They have a lifetime warranty and they have a product that uses EL84 tubes. It's about a thousand dollars. Okay. Now I think they have a pretty big backlog right now because of how popular their products are. But $1,000 versus $200, if you don't know, maybe start with the tube cube, okay? If you do know that you're gonna get into it and you're, you have high sensitivity speakers, maybe go look at Deckware. So if you wanna support the channel, you can use any of the links in the description. I will link the tube cube. However, I do not have an affiliate relationship with tube cube. So I'll just send you over to their website. If you wanna try it out, try it out. It's a great little product. I, I like it. Doesn't get super loud. You gotta have the right speakers but it gets you into the tube area. That was silly. You can also sign up for Patreon. Patreon.com slash Cheap Audio Man. Every Sunday night we have a patron-only Zoom where we get together and chit-chat about all things audio and really other things as well. There's also a Facebook group. You can go in there. You can interact, sell some of your stuff you don't want anywhere, trade stuff. I don't know, whatever you want to do. But it's a safe place because it's just the patrons and we haven't had any issues yet you can also sign up for amazon music there's a link in the description click on the link and sign up you get three or four months of amazon music for free i think you get three months of disney plus for free and you can listen to high-res music whatever you want i also have some uh, playlists linked in the description we're also doing a raffle css audio contacted me 
wanted to give away a free pair of Crichton 1 TDs and they wanted to help out Homes for Our Troops, which is my charity of choice. That's who I donate some money to every now and again. Great veterans charity helps out veterans that have been wounded in the line of duty. So don't binge watch anything on your television or your projector, whatever it is. Binge listen, maybe through your new Tube Cube 7 and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.